идет сражение в Берлине. Бой гри... Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Nothing like a little bit of newsreel footage really to set the tone for our final episode of our T-3485, our Battle of Berlin diorama scene. Well, if you've been following along for the last, uh, what, five episodes before this one, yeah, we've done quite a bit of work together. It's been a long ride, and I really appreciate you guys all hanging out with me and coming along. And so today, let's just finish up this project. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put... a uh, tank figure into our into our turret here and so once again I turn to alpine figures I love these figures you can never go wrong of course there's always the bonus of having two heads one of these has the tanker helmet on it another one has just a little peaked cap I chose the tanker helmet well first things first I need to set up some colors on my palette and for anybody who's been kind of following my video series over the past months or so uh, you know that I've had this <laughs> kind of uh, love-hate relationship with painting figures. Now, I love figures. I love the idea of figures in my dioramas and my scenes and such. But I've always, I guess, not had the skills and especially the confidence to really feel comfortable painting figures. But then there's that old adage, practice, practice, practice. And if you've been, again, watching any of my video series over the past uh, number of months, you'll have seen that I've included figures in quite a few of my scenes. And that's allowed me the practice that I've needed to not only develop my skills a little bit, but also gain a little bit of confidence in, in how I approach things and in, in my work with the figures. And so it's all, it's all coming together a little bit better for me now. I'm still not a figure painter, painter per se, but I think that uh, they're at least passable. Let's put it that way. So in terms of just how I'm approaching figures now, I've, I've gone back to the idea of a dark base color and then working up with brighter and brighter tones um, in smaller and smaller areas. So in this face, for instance, the darkest color I used was actually, it's called rubber black. It's a very dark gray with a lot of brown tone to it as well, which makes a really nice, I think it's a nice base color. Then over that, I start adding those different colors of the reds and the browns and finally these lighter flesh colors just to bring out the features in the face. It's usually about this point where the, the face is really starting to come together. And this is, this is something I have to try to keep in mind as I start working on figures again in the future is I get to this point where I just keep fiddling with it. So the, the face basically looks pretty good. And it, let's put it this way. It looks good enough, about as good as I'm going to be able to get it. But I have this, this tendency to keep fiddling with it. And in doing so, I end up erasing or overpainting a lot of the the highlights and the shadowing and the contrast um, that I've already achieved in that model, just trying to trying to prove it just by that one little bit, that one little extra brush stroke that I think is somehow going to make it all magically look awesome. And what I end up doing is basically taking two steps backwards. The Trials and the Tribulations and the Troubles of a Figure Painter by Rick Lawler. Well, anyway, let's get back on track. The body of the figure, I, this is kind of fun because it's blue, and I don't often get the chance to, to play with some brighter colors, and so this is kind of fun and was certainly different to be using blue colors instead of, you know, brown and green and, and those ordinary camouflage colors. But the process is exactly the same. Dark base color, start building up lighter and lighter colors onto the highlight areas, the tops of the wrinkles in the upper body and things like that. Any place the sun's going to hit. And then once I get to, again, that kind of pretty much their spot, I went ahead and attached the head onto the body. And then it's just adding a few of those little details here and there just to kind of make it pop. So this is where I kind of do the belt buckles, some of the buttons. I might come back in and hit a few of those creases and shadow areas, kind of darken those or reinstate those a little bit. A few highlights here and there on the face, perhaps. It's always nice when you start to see everything together. It's just a matter of trying to trying to put it all in balance, I guess, because if you work on them separately, there's going to be things that are just a little bit different, say, from top to bottom or head to body or something like that. Well, don't go away. We've got still quite a bit more work to do before we finish up this video, but I do want to draw your attention to a new feature that's on the YouTube channel. It's called Super Thanks. Probably the best way to think about the Super Thanks is basically like a tip jar. So you're watching the video, you're, you enjoy this channel, and you just want to say thank you. And so you hit the super thanks, you can make a one-time tip or one-time donation to the channel, 
and it posts in the comments and I'll be sure to see those. So if you have like a specific question or message you'd like to give me, this is a fantastic way to make sure that I see, see your posting and I'll be sure to answer your questions. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please take a few seconds and hit that like and subscribe button. It certainly does help the channel get out to more and more viewers. And hit that little bell button while you're at it, because that lets you know when new videos are arriving. And then finally, I do have a Patreon page, and the link for that is below. Over on Patreon, you will enjoy photographs of these projects as they're ongoing, early viewing of these videos before they're posted to the public, I did a video tutorial, special Patreon video this past week about working with the weathering pencils. Let's see, we also have a Discord server where we chat about all sorts of things from movie reviews to modeling to the weather report. So please consider joining Patreon. Okay, let's get back into the show here. So one of the things I have to do next, one of the last things, pretty much one of the last big pieces we need to worry about here is really tucking in that car nice and snug into the rubble there. Of course, it's got the proper location. I've cut that out. We've been working with that in the prior episodes, but now it's still kind of floating around in there. So I need to build up the rubble and the dirt works around the car. So I'm using Magic Sculpt for that and just placing it in there and squishing it into the place. The car's being protected with a little bit of plastic wrap just to keep it nice and clean. And then on those areas where I slid the rubble and the house or the building together, well, those seams I'm once again kind of covering up with a little bit of that Magic Sculpt. And then once again, my favorite part here <laughs> where we just start laying brick by brick and piece of plaster and rubble by rubble here in place just to make sure everything looks all part of the same picture. And of course, in the first case, we spray painted everything with a dark base. And in this area where I'm just touching up, I just do a little bit of a black wash. And then around the car, this is just tissue paper soaked in white glue, colored with a brown paint um, just in the water. And that just helps make sure everything's nice and tied together. And I'll put a few bricks and things on top of that once that dries, just to make sure it all looks nice and unified. Then onto the base itself, a little bit of work with the pigments here, just, just a little bit here and there, with the appropriately named Rubble Dust and Brick Dust. Speaking of bricks and brick rubble and brick dust, well, the last thing I want to do here is just make sure I integrate the model, the T34, onto the base. Of course. The T-34 was pretty much completed, painted and everything by the second episode. So here we are on episode six and the base has been constructed. And so now I want to make sure the colors and the textures are all nice and unified. So I broke out my expensive bricks here. These are actually little plaster bricks that I bought aftermarket. I don't know the name of the brand. It's just a little, little baggy. And I'm actually painting them with the same colors that I used to paint the bricks, the cork bricks earlier on. So I have that theme going through there. And then because they're plaster, I can crunch them up a little bit in my fingers, and now I can have broken bricks. And then these are just placed in a quote-unquote natural sort of manner onto the fenders and other areas of the model here, just, you know, as if, uh, you know, this tank has been slogging through the streets of Berlin and brushed up against some brick walls and got some blown-up bricks on it or whatever the case may be. But I think it's just, it's just a nice little touch. And these are being affixed onto the surface using AK sand and gravel fixer. And then once the fixer has dried, I come back with the same pigment colors, the brick dust and the, the rubble dust colors, add a little bit of that to the surfaces, just again to unify it with the rest of the model. And just a few little taps of oil paints here and there just to get a little bit of staining and color variations and tones. And there we have it, a spinning completed T-3485 as seen in the Battle of Berlin. A little bit of rubble on those corners of the fenders and such. Not a lot, just enough to add a little bit of character and interest, I think. And then the last thing I want to do or need to do on the T-34 is add our little figure. And he just goes right there, balancing in place. And now he can spin around here in all his greater glory. And then finally, we show the entire scene as it is put together and completed. Well, six episodes. For those of you who've been following this entire series, thank you very, very much. It was longer and more complex than I think I may maybe thought it was going to be at the very initial start of this, but I'm really glad that, I'm really pleased with the results and I'm really glad that, that you guys were all here along with me to, to watch and offer your support along the way have a few final photographs here at the very end of this so hang on just one more second don't don't turn off quite quite yet 
Once again, if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do so. It does help the channel get out to more and more people. And again, there is that little super chat icon at the bottom, the little dollar sign. So if you feel so inclined to show your support that way, I would appreciate that as well. And of course, the Patreon page. I always enjoy having people over there where we can get together and talk in more detail and really, really share our modeling experiences. So until next project, take care and happy modeling.